Welcome to the Shock Your Potential podcast, where we focus on creating positive, productive, and profitable workplaces. I am your host, Michael Sherlock. I am a leadership and sales expert, best known for being serious about business, despite what you may think by my appearance of often very colorful hair and sometimes crazy shoes. My guests bring a wealth of information that will support your career and your business, along with many pearls of wisdom to support balance in your personal and professional lives. Listen in as I have another amazing conversation with a guest who will certainly shock your potential. So first of all, Doug Brown started working in his family business. I don't know if we need to call, uh, you know, child labor laws on this, but when he was three years old, so we'll have to find out more about that. And since then, he's helped build over 35 companies. He's also served 12 years and seven days. I'm not sure about the number on that. Uh, with the U.S. Army and was awarded the Battalion's Most Distinguished Soldier Award, which is phenomenal. He's a top selling, he was a top selling sales rep for a $2 billion company. He currently um, works with companies that are $5 million and up who are trying to expand and optimize, as well as working with other B2B consultants and business coaches. So the last thing I'll hit on the list is he's an international best-selling author of his book, Win-Win Selling, Unlocking Your Power of Profitability by Resolving What We Always Talk About is Objections. So thank you, Doug, for joining us today. Thank you, Michael, for having me on. You. You're making me sound a lot more important than my my children would say I am. So thank you. <laughs> that obviously hits the highlight reel. Tell us a little bit more about you specifically, your business, and how you help people to shock their potential. About me, I did start working when I was three years old. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what you were doing at three, so I better find out. I was sweeping floors full time. Aww. For 25 cents mm. a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, what kind of business was this? My father had a company where they repaired electronic, uh, electric machinery. So motors, machinery, industrial equipment. Um, and it was a family business. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my dad, my grandfather, my grandmother did the books. Um, mm -hmm. And all my brothers worked there. Uh, it was a family, family affair. The only one who didn't work there was my mother. She was a nurse. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all the friends in the neighborhood. I mean, it was just one of those type of businesses. So, um, but I did make a, you know, 25 cents a week and I was the most <laughs> important kid at uh, candy day at the end of the week. Cause I had the, the oh. cash, right. Oh yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so it was fun, but I learned a lot in that business and I, I worked for my dad all the way through till I went into the military when I was just about 19 years old. And, uh, you know, so I used to get out of school at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning and go to work. And mm. so I'd work there and then I'd come home, do my homework. And, you know, that was kind of my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, from that, I learned how to build a business on your back because that's what mm -hmm. my dad did. From there, I, you know, I moved on to different things. I was that typical entrepreneurial kid who tried pretty much everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. right. I, did, I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was, but. I did, <laughs> but I was it, <laughs> but I was right. So, I mean, I, I get the opportunity to recognize that within other people now because mm -hmm. they think they're a little crazy or people think they're nuts, you know, but mm -hmm. the reality is they're an entrepreneur. So, um, my business today is working with companies on revenue growth. So some people call me, you know, a, a revenue growth expert, um, and, I just thought it was natural, right? The things that we do. So you optimize and evaluate and look at things that are working or not working, not working optimally um, or not there that need to be installed and magically the companies grow. So whether it's mm -hmm. with, with a coach or consulting business or a $150 million company, it still works very much the same. Um, That's how do I now, now, you asked me one question, which was about how do I shock people into their potential? Yeah. <laughs> um, brutal, candid truth. Mm, very good. <laughs> I think, um, and, and so let's talk more about that because I think that's so important um, that you have, I always talk at, you know, about having an accountability partner, that that truth speaker, that person who will tell you things that you need to hear that maybe you don't want to hear, but you know you need to hear. 
And, you know, so, you know, in, in my world of shock your potential, which is our, you know, my business platform and what I do and how I operate is that sometimes you need that other person to kick you in the pants or to give you that jolt or to, you know, to, to make you stop long enough to say, wait, I have to take a look at this right here, right now. And so when you're working with your clients, you know, and, and many people listening here are probably going to say, well, you know, I mean, if somebody's already doing 5 million in sales, what do they need support for? But there are, everybody at every level of business needs help and support. And it's interesting, you know, how there's certain things that happen to businesses when they are on the path to the first million. And then there's, but what works on the path to first million doesn't necessarily get you to 5 million and where you are at 5 million doesn't necessarily get you to where you need to be at 20 million. So, you know, what, what does that brutal candid truth look like with, with you and your clients? Well, I mean, it's, so you're absolutely right. I mean, if you keep doing what you're doing today that got you where you are and you keep doing that same thing, you're going to likely stay in that space. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so, you know, I call it the truth mirror, right? And um, I, I got this from a friend of mine. She used to call me Dougie Fresh, um, <laughs> which was her, was her nickname for me. She's, she's adorable and she's um, great. Uh, her name's Mashana. And Mashana was saying to me one day, you know, I, you know, I think uh, I want to lose a little weight, but I'll just wear some slim black clothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> we we, we have done that. Yeah, me, <laughs> me too. <laughs> and you know, we had enough of a relationship so I could be very candid with her. And I said to her, I said, you know, that's not going to work when you get undressed in front of the mirror. <laughs> so, and <laughs> she looked at me and she says, "That's good. You got to keep using that, right?" Because <laughs> so. I look at it that way when, when we all look all size businesses, I mean, I've worked with big companies, you know, into it, for example, you know, they were losing money on their check division, they writing, you know, people buying checks and we were able to turn them around and, you know, it wasn't, it was one or two things, right. That turned mm -hmm. that around for them. Um, you know, so big companies like Procter and Gamble, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, any of those, they all hire consultants because they get a truth mirror from mm -hmm. the outside yes. you know i mean when we're inside let's say uh you know the the the, the car our, our vehicles and we're driving down the road uh, you know and somebody comes up and they're pointing at our car going hey 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 and we roll down the window and they go hey you got a, a flat tire almost on the back of your car you know you yeah. can't see that it's you know because you're inside the car so yeah. So all companies, you know, I mean, I, I like to do assessments on companies. Um, sometimes companies are reluctant to do that because they just want to grow their revenue. But the reality mm -hmm. is if you grow your revenue and there are things that are going to, let's just say a shaky bridge um, yeah. and, and you're not aware of that and you add more vehicles onto that bridge, that bridge is apt to let go at some place and, you know, on the bridge. So I like to do a clear assessment. And I think this is great for anybody, no matter what size business you're at, you can literally assess where you are. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's about getting honest. Um, and sometimes it's just honesty about the person, right? The, the person is actually, you know, business is very easy when you remove people. That's what I've done. <laughs> It's so true. If it wasn't for people, we could get so much more done. <laughs> I know. They have all these emotions and needs and wants and all kinds of stuff. Uh, right? So when we remove that component of it, uh, you know, and I, a lot of times when I'm working with um, people who are just in denial about being honest, I, I say, you know, take a, uh, take a business card, right? And just on the back of the business card, every time you tell a something that's not true. It could be a little mm -hmm. tiny non-truth or a big, you know, hey, I was, I missed the meeting because of traffic, but the reality is, you know, you slept in three hours, right? That type of thing. <laughs> so right, exactly. um, I tell them, you know, take a pen, strike the back of the card. You know, mm -hmm. when you get to four and then your fifth one, put a line through it, right? And I would challenge everybody who's listening to this to actually do that exercise because it, it, there's not been one person that's done that exercise that doesn't come back and has said to me, my gosh, I learned a lot. Mm, mm -hmm. 
I mean, I had one guy, he was a salesperson and he came back with 256 strikes in one week on his card. Wow. Wow. (laughs) And what honesty for himself. I mean, that's just the fact that he actually did it and followed through that way. That's really impressive. And that had to be hard for him. That's exactly what he said to me. He goes, this was the hardest thing I think I've ever done because it made me look at, you know, how much I'm fabricating the truth. And so Mm -hmm. I said to him, I said, if you're doing that with yourself and your family, what are you doing with your clients? Right. Right. And so here's the, here's the crazy part, that one little exercise. And then we worked together for, for a while uh, on his, I'll call them emotional blocks, right? Mm -hmm. He went from $140,000 a year in sales within 12 months to $2.1 million in net commissions. Wow. Holy buckets. <laughs> and so the reality, and he's made a million dollars. I mean, I we talk every once in a while, but he's made a million dollars a year every year after that in net commissions. And, and the reality mm-hmm. is that when you get very truthful in the assessment of your business, mm-hmm. you now become objective versus subjective about what needs to happen. Yeah, because you can't you can't deny it when you're looking at it anymore. And I know it's interesting you say that because um uh, I just actually uh, was uh, interviewed for a, um, a media outlet, and the question was, "When are you? When is over positivity a detriment?" And I thought it was really, it was such a great question. I really pondered it because I said, you know, here's the thing. And I, and I gave him my whole example. I said, you know, so for instance, you know, like I, I've been that this positive person my entire life to the annoyance of other people at times. They're like, <laughs> you know, do you only have rose colored glasses on? I'm like, no, but I only like to look at those. I mean, I see the other things too. But, um, but it was interesting because with my, with my business prior to COVID, uh, 95% of my business income came from me getting on an airplane going mm-hmm. to speak or train. And I knew that wasn't the right thing. I knew that wasn't where I needed to be. But when you're flush in those moments, you don't work on the other parts of that bridge. I love your bridge anal- analogy. You're like, you know what? It's it's good. You know, the bridge is maybe a little shaky, but it's not breaking. There's nothing that I can see that's breaking. And I'm the only thing going over the bridge. And when, you know, and I knew there's things I wanted to do. I wanted to do an app. I wanted to do some different things with the podcast. I had all these other things that I wanted to do, but where my focus was, was where there was energy. And so when the when the bridge fell down, and you can't drive over it anymore, you know, then the question is, okay, you got to rebuild the bridge. How are you going to rebuild it? And what are you going to do differently knowing and being, and you know, I mean, all that time I was being honest in my head, but I wasn't being honest with what I was doing. I knew, I knew the reality, but I wasn't doing it. And um, as I shared that story, gosh, I think I shared that story in like May of last year. And I had so many people come to me and say, I can't believe you shared that on LinkedIn. Yet it is one of my blog um, articles. Like, I can't believe you shared that about your business. You just told the whole world your business fell out from underneath you. And I said, well, there's no better way to face the truth than put it down on LinkedIn to your 18,000 followers. (laughs) And then I had to face it and do something about it. It's been a slow slow rebuilding, but it's definitely going to be a different business you know, every year going forward because of, you know, that roadblock, that roadblock, that, that bridge that completely destroyed. (laughs) And, and, and see, here's the thing. Firstly, I applaud you because you have the courage to face the truth, right? I mean, and we all have that inner voice inside of us that says, you know, geez, don't go down that path. And, you know, Mm -hmm. but the money's there and we go. Right. (laughs) Or, or, you know, or, you know, there's been times in my life where it's like, nah, she's probably not the right girl for you to ask out. But, you know, (laughs) I did it anyways and it blew up in my face later on. Right. So, (laughs) but I I haven't worked with an entrepreneur. I don't know one that is seasoned, anyways, who hasn't had a failure, if you will, that what some people would call a failure. I don't call them failures. I mean, they're like you said. You were going on a path, everything was going fine, then something changed, right? Yeah. And so, you know, kaboom. Um, I've had that happen to me, you know, several times. I mean, in the, you know, in the, in the 35 plus companies, not every one of them worked out. Right, exactly. Right. And it and it's awful when you lose, you know, uh, 600 grand in a, in a year, right? And that's what mm-hmm. happened to one of them for me. So, but it's not about 
the mistakes and it's not about losing. It's about how you recover and how quickly do you recover? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the fact that you're brutally honest means you're going to recover very quickly um, because you're you're asking the right questions. The, the challenge with what happens, you know, when you're focused on the positivity like that, you're focused on solutions. Mm -hmm. And most people ask questions around the problem. Oh, why yeah. did this happen? What's that? You know, and, and, you know, I learned this from Tony Robbins. I mean, Tony does a segment, you know, that says the quality of the questions or the quality of your life. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the reality is he's, he's right. So if you focus on the, okay, how do I, even if I don't know how, how do I, what could be some possibilities? And we focus on the positivity side of that. You're focused on the solution. We will never solve problems by focusing on the problem. We have right. to remove the cause that's causing the problem. And the only mm -hmm. way to remove the cause is to focus on the solution to find what the cause is. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing marketing uh, or prospecting, you know, you want short term thought mm -hmm. and short term returns because, and then you could put a long term in. One of the mistakes I see companies make all the time is that, oh, we got this long term initiative. So let's work on this long term initiative, but we'll forget about the short term. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, you know, when yeah. salespeople do that, I mean, they don't sell anything for a long time and there's still expense going out. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And so, yeah, you have to have that variety. Um, and I think it's um, what's really interesting to me today. I talk about this often because I have a lot of people who do a lot of business and individual consulting and coaching is that, you know, when kind of coaches kind of came on the scene 25 years ago, there wasn't, you know, I remember the first person who told me, Hey, I'm now a certified life coach. And I was like, and I love this woman. She was a very nice person, but there's no way that I would have paid her money <laughs> to coach me on my life and career. She just didn't have it there. And now I see so many people doing amazing things with really high level and, and, and minute coaching that, you know, I think we're all understanding that, um, in order to move forward in our businesses or our professional lives, you need, you need that truth mirror. You need somebody who's going to hold you accountable and you need somebody who's going to help you recognize that that back tire is flat when you can't tell yet because it hasn't, it's just low. It hasn't blown yet. And you know, the goal is what can we do before that tire blows so that we can not only keep going, but that you, you know, recognize what kind of maintenance it needs, or, you know, it's, it's a really great analogy of, of how working with somebody else will help you to see things that you don't see yourself. And, and I think, you know, even people that, that believe that, you know, self-made millionaires, you know, or overnight successes, they think that those terms are accurate, but there's no self-made millionaire who did it all by themselves. And there's no overnight success. There might be overnight recognition, but, you know, the overnight success is just because the word got out. But they, you know, if they were a musician, they were playing in the lo lowest dive bars and they were, you know, playing for a cocktail in a, in a tip jar, you know. So, <laughs> so, there's a lot between that and being on a stage, you know, selling out to 100,000 fans. Yep. I mean, Boston wrote a song about that, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they were yeah. just another band in Boston, right? <laughs> and some guy walks up with a big cigar and says, hey, guys, I think you're really great. And then they start promoting them and bam, you know, they have the number one selling yeah. album back then, right? I mean, and, and that's what, you know, propelled them to to their level. I mean. Well, and I, Doug, I love your concept too of, you know, kind of long-term, uh, you know, perspective as well as, you know, maintaining what you need to in the short term. And I think that's a really good tie-in to, you know, my theme for this month. Um, but I don't know what, you know, what what's your advice for people to remain flexible in this year and beyond so that, okay, we've got great plans, but things may happen. How do we, how do we adapt the best so that we keep going no matter what's thrown at us? So in the terms of business, um, prospecting, right? So the, mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell a lot of people this and they, they, they look at me kind of funny at first, but I, you know, I always say, look, the master prospector will always outsell the master closer. Oh, that's good. Uh, I've never seen it. I'm writing ever. that down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to have an overabundance of, or a multitude of leads that you're mm -hmm. constantly going after. Why? It puts us in an abundance mindset. Yes. We we don't take that client. 
I do not believe there is anything such as, oh, I took a bad client. Hmm. I believe concretely that, no, you made a bad decision to take on a good client that wasn't right for you. Ah, good. Good. Right? I like the spin. And therefore, now it's a bad situation because mm -hmm. you reached, right? You, and, and, and you're reaching because maybe you didn't have enough other, you know, alternatives within your pool to, yeah. and so people do that, you know, they need the money, they take the job, then they get in and they're like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, crazy. Now that happens yep. on, you know, super high levels with companies, you know, whether they're taking on, you know, a $500 million construction project. And then they're like, oh, I wish I never did this. Yes. Um, or, or, you know, you're taking on a, a life's coaching uh, you know, with somebody that you, you just knew, like you, you said earlier, Michael, uh, you know, that inner feeling, you know, you just shouldn't have been doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I believe, and I've seen this happen over the years because this is not the first time our economy has been rocked. It's not the first time we faced, you know, scary, uh, things like COVID-19. I mean, we've had AIDS, SARS, MERS, 9-11, Banking yeah. crashes, real estate crash. I mean, you know, the list goes on, right? Uh, yep. You know, I went through a divorce, just, you know, mm -hmm. um, which wiped out a lot of my, uh, you know, cash, right? And then I mm -hmm. had to rebuild from there. So what I have always found, and now more important than ever for people, put the pedal down, start Excellent. generating leads and get yourself six to eight ways over the next 12 months new ways, not the old ways, unless you'd want to revive them. Um, <laughs> and in order to have a, a multitude of incoming business into your life, someone once taught me when you have your glass so full of liquid. Yeah. And that liquid is consuming everything and you, you know, you, you, you have bad water or whatever in the glass. <laughs> If you try to pour more good stuff in, it's just going to spill out all over the sides, right? Yeah. Yeah. So any business, unless you're just starting out and you have <laughs> and one- you everything. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, in that case, you're just starting out. It's okay to have one client because that's mm -hmm. your first client. If you, if you have that one client and it's consuming all of your time, you have so much water or liquid in the glass- you won't have time to pour some other good stuff in. A, a, a crazy, I call him crazy because he's he's funny, but he's he's off the wall. You know, once said to me about this subject, he said, you know, a one-legged pony's not going to likely win the race. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, That's a good statement. <laughs> I'm like, what planet did you come from when you come up with the, because he comes up with these things all the time, right? So, um, but, you know, I mean, it it is... I mean, if you think about it, you know, you're not going to win the, you know, the Kentucky Derby usually with one leg and, you know, as a <laughs> pony, right. Or a horse. Uh, Doug, I think it's fabulous. I know we're near the end of our time. Um, and there's going to be lots of people who want to contact you. We'll have all of your contact information in the show notes, but just in case somebody wants to look you up right now, because they cannot wait to start working with you. What's the best way for them to find you? Uh, they can either just directly, uh, if they want to know more about me, they can, you know, go to business .com, which is the website. Um, I just heard my Boston accent in there on fact this. Um, so, <laughs> so business success factors.com. Uh, you could send me an email directly at Doug at business success factors.com. I'm accessible, you know, and uh, I love to talk to people as you probably can tell. Um, where... <laughs> I don't know. You're very shy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... Well, before we go, do you have any last words of wisdom or pearls of advice for my listeners and viewers? Be good to yourself. Don't beat up on yourself. There's no sense in, you know, if things aren't working out, firstly, look at, assess, right? Get truthful. Is it you? Is it mm. someone else, right? Because a lot of times we like to, just as human beings, you know, judge, point, blame, say, oh, no, it's because of this or because of that. And the reality is it's because we made that decision. Like in your case, mm. if you took that one client and you had no room to breathe, Again, you know, it's not that it's a bad client, it's a bad decision. So right, we, right. you know, so whether it's on the business or personal in your life, you know, don't beat yourself up and don't beat other people up. Uh, I'm trying to remember the author. His last name is Ruiz. I think it's Louis 
uh, Ruiz. He wrote a book called The Five Agreements and he wrote one called The Four Agreements. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Love. Yes. So it's an awesome book. I recommend it to everybody. And I recommend Win Win Selling Unlocking Your Profitability. Very good. I like that. Oh, by, by, by Doug Brown. Um, but I, <laughs> I oh, sh shameless promotion, right? So that's okay. The, I don't care. That's that's what it's all about, man. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but in his book, he his first rule, uh, he took it from what he called the Toltec, which was an ancient civilization. Yep. The first yep. rule is be impeccable to your word, and yep. your that means your own word toward yourself, and that means your own words toward other people. Which means don't put people down. You know, don't put yourself down. And if you live by that rule, I, that one's hard, by the way. But if you live yeah. by that rule, you're naturally going to be, as you said, you're the person of positivity. You're, you're naturally going to be far more positive because you're focused on positivity. And when you have to explain to somebody, hey, this isn't the right way, you're not going in and beating up on them and you're not beating up on yourself. Right. Um Absolutely. I love it. And I, um, several years ago, I, I took all my not all, but the majority of my books, because I've always been a book person. I love the book, the actual book. And uh, when I moved to Philadelphia, I had to decide what's really going 3,000 miles across country. <laughs> so I let go a lot of my books, but The Four Agreements is one that I still have. And it's uh, I like to refer to it here and here and there. And because it's, it's one of those things that the first time I read it, I was probably in my mid-20s. And it really it really gave me a different perspective in life and I still value it today. I didn't know there was a five agreements one, so I'll have to go find that now. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, thank you so much for being my guest. It has just been uh, great information and I'm so glad that we are connected. Yes, I am too, Michael. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I really appreciate your style. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased then. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Shock Your Potential podcast. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and like us today. <laughs>